Hi everyone, today I want to talk about Hardcore in Diablo 3 and some tips and experience that I have gathered from many seasons of playing Hardcore myself. So usually after I'm done with my softcore adventures or even while doing those, I usually go for a little bit of Hardcore and I try to play like a different class or a different build and try to push to quite high ranks. For example, last season I've done uh, Demon Hunter, I've got some front page ranks on solo Demon Hunter leaderboards with 1500 Paragons. In uh, season 22 I went for Wizard and I did uh, the Twister Wizard, where I also got I think a rank 5 or something at some point. So in general I tend to rank quite high with uh, rather low Paragon and not really a super optimized character. So there are some general tips that I have for basically every build, every class, every player. And then there is some like specific tips depending on what you're doing and I also have a few words to say about each of the different classes in this video. So let's start first. You have a cheat death passive on every single class and it goes without saying that you always want to use this. So this is spirit vessel, awareness, nerves of steel, these kind of things. You always want to use them as soon as you unlock them because they will help you out when you're in trouble and usually don't really lose much. A passive is not a big investment and even on softcore some people use those passives. So make sure you have them. On top of this, you also have the follower that can also give you another cheat death passive. So you can just choose those if you feel like you might need it. And the second layer of security also helps you to play more aggressively most of the time. So it's really useful to have those. The only exception here is the scoundrel which has the knight's whale and the only reason to use scoundrel is this ability. But if you want to protect yourself at least against disconnects very well then the vanish is actually not really bad because it goes up to I think seven seconds duration which means that you can actually survive quite long while deceit and you have a good chance to just get out of the game while you are crashing. Problem with this ability is that if you use it in regular play it, the effect actually ends as soon as you move or attack so this is only a cheat death that will help you when you actually disconnect. Okay the second golden rule of hardcore is you never farm with your best gear. So essentially you always use the second best set of items that you have unless it's some stuff that is easily replaceable. But when you have some you know really GG endgame loot and this is something that you want to push with for example those unhold essence pants here they are you know perfect so you don't really want to use them and in most cases it also doesn't really matter. If you use some non asian pants that have similar stats, yeah, you're gonna lose like 1% damage, you're gonna lose like 2% toughness or maybe 4% toughness, something like that. And all this does not really make much of a dent. Of course, those bonuses accumulate a bit, so you can eventually go like one, two, maybe three tiers higher with like the really good items versus really bad items. But the overall farming efficiency usually doesn't change very much. So when you farm GRs, you want to make sure that when you die it doesn't matter that much and you basically only lose your, your gems. It's maybe it's usually only for weapons and maybe a, a few other slots that are really hard to get where this is really a problem. For example if you have an ancient weapon and you have only one of them and then you have only non-ancients and you still haven't found like a second copy of let's say this Yang's recurve here then it might be alright to use it anyway because it's such a nice boost in damage and especially if it's one that is not perfect, I would probably use it. But in general, you want to avoid using your best stuff and you want to reserve this for your push at the end of the season. Because more often than not, you will die most likely to some game crash or to some game freeze or anything like that. And then all your stuff will be lost and nothing ends your season faster than that. So it always comes down to making your own choice about what you want to risk while farming versus uh, what do you really want to save for the push later on. Similarly, you also don't really want to augment anything too early. So usually augments don't really matter too much anyway. So they do quite a bit when you're very low paragon. So when you're like paragon 1k, 1.5k, even 2k, you can definitely feel the impact of augments. Not only do they make you stronger and you go up like two to three tiers depending on level of augments and your own paragon level, but you also gain quite a significant chunk of toughness, which obviously is quite helpful in hardcore. But in general, it will depend on how many builds you want to play and how many gems you allow yourself to risk. Most of the time, augments are just a really huge grind. And at least for myself, I like to play multiple builds and I, I just always run out of augments. 
so you always want to reserve them until the point where you know you have more than enough gems anyway and then you can start putting some stuff on your farming set or if you play like maybe only one build or maybe two builds or something like that in the whole season and you know you're gonna have way too many gems anyway because you just focus on those one or two builds then it's totally fine to just throw augments here and there also on your farming setup but in general same thing as with the gg items you want to save them until the push it doesn't matter too much if your farming efficiency is a bit lower because you can't squeeze out those last two tiers if you do 110 speeds or if you do 112 speeds in the end is quite inconsequential aside from a bit more paragon gains but obviously losing all your good gear and losing all your augments all at once while farming is a really big hit to the motivation and just your overall progression one other reason to use augments though could be if you play dps in groups and you have like a consistent group or a consistent like build that will very often be dps in groups so in those cases it might be good to augment your stuff early because usually in groups it is quite safe because people can protect you when you dc and this kind of stuff so you don't really die very much there and also you will find groups more often when you are augmented in general you don't really build your character in a very different way on hardcore versus softcore there are some builds that are a bit more squishy than others and this is kind of the same problems that you have in softcore versus hardcore so nothing really changes in some cases there are some extremely greedy choices on some softcore builds that you don't really take on hardcore but overall a build is either playable or it's not playable and then it comes down to you to decide do you want to include extra toughness do you want to include extra defensive choices in your setup or not so the meta is essentially the same it just comes down to how difficult it is for you one good tip that i can give though is that you can always just add a bit more vitality in your paragons so you can go you know just with another 200 300 400 points in your paragon more than you usually would take on softcore this usually already gives you a nice toughness boost of anywhere between 20 to 50 percent depending on your setup and this can help you out to survive those one shots but since ultimately you always want to play exactly this one setup to either farm or push with on each of the builds there is so to say the one mathematical best solution you don't really change anything most of the time one important tip that i have for builds that have stone gauntlets in their setup is make sure you pay very close attention to your cc immunity so either you have ice climbers then this is all fine but if you are let's say a demon hunter with impale and you have to rely on your permanent vengeance uptime to get the cc immunity you need to make sure that you never ever attack when your cc immunity is down or else you're going to be stuck in your attack animation for 10 seconds and you will die Another important thing to pay attention to, even when you're farming in GRs, is the monster types that are present in your runs. For example, these are cursed or grotesques that leave like explosions or dot effects on the ground and stuff like this are always dangerous, no matter what build you play, even if you go very fast and you one-shot everything. So even when you go to easy difficulties, you need to pay attention to what's on the map and be aware that you know this is a source of danger for you. Also, you have these sand dwellers that can reflect projectiles and there's no way to survive a reflected projectiles if you encounter those and you hit yourself with your own shots so if you're playing a projectile based build you will kill yourself or your teammates if you're not careful the same thing happens with dune dervishes which are the so-called spinners they uh, uh, get summoned from nemesis bracers very often as minions so be aware when they are around and when they start spinning you need to make sure that either you kill them super fast or you see them or you just don't attack while this is happening. The Dune Dervish just look like this in case you're not aware of what is this and here's a spinning animation so that's exactly what you want to avoid. One thing that I can recommend to all hardcore players is to level a Gem of Ease as early as possible in the season. Even if you have people to boost you it will usually take quite long if you don't have a Gem of Ease on your own character or on the booster or both and you don't really want to waste your time after a rip to get leveled up to 1 to 70. Especially if you play solo, you need to have a gem of ease and you do this as early as possible. At least a level 25 gem of ease so that you can put it in a weapon and have the level 1 level requirement so you can just blast your way through torment 6. But of course be aware when you boost yourself that you might not be very tanky when you do this and you might one shot everything but you might also take a lot of damage yourself. In any case, after you have leveled your 1, 2, 3 main gems, make sure you get the gem of ease up next. Now some other tips that you can use for your advantage in hardcore is that you can, for example, in T16 and in bounties where 
it's a very easy difficulty for most builds and you just obliterate everything anyway, you can make yourself much more tanky than is actually required without really any loss of efficiency. So what I mean is that you can easily replace something like a Bane of the Powerful in your setup to go with something like Molten Wildebeest or Esoteric Alteration. Even though you have way too much toughness or even use Gold Rub in your setup, this might be a good choice here because it probably doesn't even matter if you lose this damage from the Bane of the Powerful. And now you have a lot more extra toughness and you will more easily survive, especially disconnects because you don't really want to die in T16 at all. If you're playing in groups, you definitely want to make sure that you're using voice communication at all times if possible, because this will allow you to call out when you're lagging or when you're crashing, and then the others can come to save you. If they just have to see that you're not doing anything anymore, most of the time it will already be too late because you can easily get one shot when all your damage reductions drop. Similarly, you should always pay a close eye on your group mates to see, first of all, where they are and also what is their status. So you want to see the HP a little bit, you want to see if they are proc'd, so you can actually see your teammates cheat death ability being on cooldown. And in those cases you want to pay closer attention, because this is when it gets dangerous. So even if you're not in voice communication, make sure you keep an eye on your teammates and you react quickly when anything happens. Similarly, when you have your own cheat death on cooldown because something happened, there's no harm in just staying back or even going back to town to make it safe especially when you're playing a more squishy build and you're not really confident that you can very easily survive everything from that point on it might be that you play a quite tanky build and you might have just gotten hit by some reflective projectile as i mentioned or maybe a molten explosion that is very hard to survive on any build and then you can just easily continue anyway because there's a very low risk of dying but in some cases you have a squishy build on hardcore and then there's no reason to risk it all basically. So even if you wait a minute in town, usually not a big deal, but if you push, obviously you can't just waste a minute of your run, so you kind of have to keep pressing forward even when your cheat death is on cooldown. So most of the time in solo push, at least you have your follower first and then your own cheat death, so you have kind of two layers of security there, but even so, sometimes you might double proc and then it's up to you to decide, is it worth keep to keep going in this run run that you have, maybe it's a super good map, maybe you have your pylon active and you have to use it, or you just decide, okay, this run is not really that great anyway, and I'd rather just play it safe, go back and try another key. So this comes down to how many keys you have, how much time you want to invest in your pushes, just in general, how safe you want to play. Usually I'm someone who just presses forward anyway with my cheat deaths on cooldown, but I tend to play a bit more carefully. So I make sure that I'm aware of the, all the danger sources. For example, a cane beam that can, can come through a wall, or if there's any grotesque around, if there's any wall or elites, for example, those can be extremely dangerous if you get cornered somewhere and you don't have any mobility skill to get out of there and on, uh, at the ready, or maybe there is uh, molten explosions and all this kind of stuff. So be aware of like what are the high damage, high danger sources in a run. Always take a look at elite affixes, always take a look at your positioning and where the monsters are moving to make sure that you don't get cornered and you don't get stuck. And for this reason, you also always want to use a mobility skill in your setup. Most builds include this anyway, but there are some builds where you can drop a mobility skill, for example, something like LOD Necromancer builds where you have nice black death but I would definitely recommend against that because most of the time those mobility versus no mobility setups are not even very far apart, if at all, and you rather have something at the ready to get out of danger. Okay, lastly, I want to go over some class specific points for hardcore especially. So let's start with the Barbarian. We go in the alphabetical order. Here we have Band of Might as part of almost every single bar build in the push. So you have to be aware that this is only an 8 second duration on an 80% damage reduction buff. So you have to make sure that you always use your ground storm or leap or furious charge every 8 seconds. If you don't do that, you'll most likely get one shot by a lot of abilities. Always make sure that you have this ready, that you have enough cooldown reduction to actually use them in time. Because for example, leap has a 10 second cooldown, charge also has a 10 second recharge. But if you rely on something like merciless assault, to get your cooldown to a lower value, make sure that you use it in time. In some cases, you might be using Furious Charge to proc Focus and Restraint, so you still need to prioritize Ban of Might and not the damage buff. You can just get that afterwards anyway. Next, the Crusader. 
Crusader has Akira's Champion Prophet as one of the main layers of defense. This is used in essentially every single Crusader build and you can use this to your advantage to proc on purpose with this ability and uh, get your, uh, he your health back to full. This is quite useful. Main issue is that this procs after your followers cheat death. So it's not too useful most of the time to take the followers cheat death. But you have this and you can usually activate it either once every 20 seconds or once every 32 seconds, depending on the build exactly. Also, you want to make sure that you have an ability to move through enemies. This can be either Iron Skin Flash or Steed Charge, which is usually included in most builds. On the Monk, most of the time you have Dashing Strike anyway, but there are some builds without it. But you should have at least Dashing Strike or Serenity, at least one of the two. Just to be able to have a bit of immunity or something to escape danger. Because if you don't have anything, you might also get stuck. You can use your Epiphany Teleport as well. Epiphany allows you to teleport to an enemy. So you can try to use this to get out of danger sometimes when you're stuck. But you should definitely not rely on this because it's also quite difficult to do. If you can, you want to keep your Serenity ready for the really dangerous situations. And similarly, you want to keep maybe one charge of Dancing Strike ready for whenever you really need to escape. On the Demon Hunter, you usually want to include either Smurl Screen or Vault for your mobility or defensive skill. That depends a little bit on the exact build you're playing, so either way is fine usually. There is also an interesting choice between Convention of Elements and the Elusive Ring that almost every Demon Hunter build makes. So you can go with Elusive Ring that gives you a lot of damage reduction, but again, be aware of this 8, per eight second duration. It's not very long. Especially when you have a build that doesn't regenerate a lot of discipline, you might be running out of discipline sometimes and not be able to activate this. So be careful and then once you are more comfortable, typically you go with conventional elements as the pushing choice. But Elusive Ring is usually quite nice even for farming. On the Necromancer you need to be aware that Blood Rush actually costs health to use. So when you proc and you're really low HP, you might not be able to use Blood Rush at all. So what you have to do is, you have to attack and heal or use your potion to actually be able to escape. So this is something to be aware about and not panic with. Also, many builds use Tragul's Corroded Fang that give you uh, all curses when you swing your scythe. And this means that you get the Leech Curse on top of your other curses. And with the Leech Curse, you heal by a percentage of your own health when you attack. This is extremely strong and when you proc, again, you shouldn't panic rather just swing once or twice to get a lot of health and then you can make a safe escape. On the Witch Doctor, almost every single build uses the combo of Lacumba's Ornament, Sacred Harvester and Soul Harvest for a lot of damage reduction. This is extremely powerful and kind of core to almost every single Witch Doctor build. If you don't have this buff active at the start of the run or if you drop it during the run, especially at the boss, you're gonna be in trouble. So make sure you never drop this buff in the last 30 seconds. And you just need to fresh it on one target at a time to gain all 10 stacks. At the start of the run you have to make sure you rush into a pack of enemies with spirit walk active, do not proc, and then press it when there's a lot of enemies around you and you're gonna roll from there. But when you drop the buff, especially on the boss fight, you will be in trouble and you need like two minutes to get it back to 10 to kind of get a decent value of damage reduction. Because the closer you get to those 10 stacks, the more damage reduction you gain for each stack. So the potency of this damage reduction buff gets stronger and stronger the more of it you have. Which is exactly the reason why you die so easily when you don't have all 10 stacks. Also you need to be aware of your long spirit walk cooldown. It's a 10 second cooldown on your only real defense and mobility skill. So this is usually the reason why Wish Doctors are kind of slow and clunky and also not really that great. You don't have to see immunity. You have uh, Spirit Walk as your only defense and it has a long cooldown. You can reduce it with Grave Injustice, so be sure that you know how this works, how you can kill stuff quickly to uh, get your Spirit Walk to reset. But this is definitely something to play around the most. Lastly, the Wizard. A lot of builds use Halo of Karini, which is another 80% damage reduction buff. And this only activates for 5 seconds when you electrocute a target 15 yards or more away. So when you're staying in melee range with some builds, for example on the boss fight you're trying to stack Stricken, you will usually not get this effect until you run out. So you always have to be aware that this doesn't always activate. And even when you're fighting in density, this doesn't necessarily activate because it might just not hit something that's at least 15 yards away. And when this buff drops, you're essentially instantly dead. The cheat death ability on the wizard is the worst by far, which only gives you a 400% shield. 
and it can easily be broken when you don't have your damage reduction active. So you can just proc and immediately die afterwards, especially when you're standing in molten explosions, orbiter and this kind of stuff. So make sure you completely understand how Hate of Karini works and always keep an eye on your buff bar. And that's also it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope that you learned something, maybe even for your own softcore adventures, if you play softcore mostly. But it can definitely be a very fun and refreshing experience to try some hardcore here and there. Usually the leaderboards are accessible because not many people farm a lot in hardcore. So you can definitely rank quite high if you play well. That's definitely one of the reasons why I enjoy hardcore so much. There's not really so many crazy farmers, not so many crazy botters there. And you have just a much more fun competition. And obviously there's always a risk factor where sometimes you proc in the middle of a push and suddenly you have to make split moment decisions that uh, might get you killed or might lead to the successful run in the end. So stuff like that always keeps it interesting. Hope you liked this video and see you guys next time.